Welcome back friends. It's been a while since I've posted a new video. Actually it's been a month exactly. I am so sorry but I have been traveling for work for a month straight. It has not been pleasant. It has not been fun. Actually after this experience I kind of want to get a job where I don't travel at all and I just either sit in an office or I'm working home remotely but that is beside the point. We are here today because I have read a lot of romance books lately and to be honest the romance authors have been failing me this year. I think it all started in the beginning of the year when I released that video where I was reading romance books until I could feel the love in my heart again and one of the books that I read there was Six Fox by Tilly Cole that was a dark romance. It was so bad. I gave it one star. And then I read The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston in a different video. And I gave that one two stars. I did not like that book. I thought the main characters were losers. It was very boring. I didn't get the romance. I didn't get the hype of why everybody loves that book. And then we just kept falling downwards when I read Heartless by Elsie Silver, did not like that, get that one star. And then I read Happy Place by Emily Henry, also one star. We don't need to talk about the Happy Place hate that I have in my heart. And I also read The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. I think I gave that one one star or two stars. It was also very not good. It was very boring. I could not understand for the life of me why the two main leads like each other. And then there's been a bunch of romance books that I have read lately that have been not it. But I don't want to get into those because I'm going to save those for a future video. So I got to thinking because the romance romance authors have been failing me so much why don't I dedicate an entire video where I give romance authors a second chance. So this is kind of a spin on the popular book through trend of giving authors you hate a second chance but this is my romance edition. I've already mentioned Heartless by Elsie Silver which I gave one star I did not like that book so I figured why don't I pick up the sequel to that book and give her a second chance. And the next book in that series is Powerless. This one is focusing on Sloane and Jasper. Sloane is a cousin of the Eaton brothers and then Jasper is kind of like an adopted brother. The thing that I hate about Heartless is that it had a big focus on the kid. There was a trope in that book that is my least favorite trope so I'm really hoping that this one kind of corrects course because obviously I own five of the books that are in the series and I don't want to get rid of it all because I just hated Heartless. So I want to give Elsie Silver a second chance by picking this one up. And then the next book that I'm going to pick up is Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. I read The Bodyguard like I mentioned earlier. Hated it. There was no intimate scenes. I think they probably like kissed maybe maybe two or three times and I could not for the life of me understand why those two people liked each other. There was like zero chemistry in my viewpoint. So let's give Catherine Center a second chance. Let's see if the bodyguard was just a one-off and I just picked up the wrong one. Hello Stranger centers on this woman who's an artist. I think she has some kind of like medical emergency that affects her ability to be an artist. I know that face blindness plays a role in this book. I'm just not sure to what level it does. So I'm interested to see if Catherine Center can really write chemistry where I can like really feel the feels because that's what I feel like was lacking in The Bodyguard. Then the next book I plan on picking up is Funny Star by Miss Emily Henry. I have been wanting to read this book for quite a while now but Happy Place left such a bad taste in my mouth that I had put this off for a while. I don't need to get into the happy place hate we all know that I dislike that book but funny story I've been hearing if you don't like happy place you're gonna like this this apparently is a return for from Miss Emily Henry so we are going to give her a second chance with this book and hopefully I end up liking it it's been getting really great reviews so that's giving me a lot of high hopes that I might like this one so let's get started with the reading and I will check up with you guys once I figure out what book I'm gonna read first I did not like the ending of this book it just introduced what I didn't want to have happen so I'm just I'm fucking done. I hate it. I mean, I will continue on with the series because I think the next book is focusing on Jasper, who is the hockey player, and Sloane, who is like a cousin, not his cousin, because that would be incest, but he's a cousin of the family, and Jasper is a friend to the Eaton family. And I really hope that there are no kids involved in that one. I'm not looking my best, and I'm aware, but I do need to give you guys this update. I am about two-thirds of the way through Powerless, and I have to say, I'm really liking it so far. I think this is the book that I have heard people say you either like it or you hate it, and there's no in-between. I am falling into the camp of the people who are loving it. I went into this book so apprehensive because, as we know, the previous book Heartless is vying for first place for the worst book that I've read in 2024 along with Happy Place. 
So in this book, we are following Jasper. And Jasper is a really famous hockey player in Canada. He is like the adoptive brother of the Eaton clan. His mom and dad abandoned him when he was really young. His sister passed away as a child and Jasper blames himself for that. When he was a teenager, he was found sleeping in a car by himself and it was Bo Eaton that found him and he was like, you can just come live with us. Which I found to be very kind, very sweet. I love that of Bo. And Harvey, the dad, of the Eaton clan was like, I will take you in as my adoptive son. And then we introduce Sloane, who is a cousin of the Eaton family. And she spends most of her summer on Wishing Well Ranch. So Sloane meets Jasper as a child. Now Sloane, the minute she meets him, she has developed a crush. And I know this age gap situation, if you think of a 10 year old and a 16 year old, you'd be like gross. But I really do believe that the author makes it clear that Jasper had zero feelings towards Sloane as a child. Child, and it only really develops when Sloan is 18 conveniently and he is 24 and she asks him to go to her senior prom and he says no I'm kind of a big hockey player right now it can't be something that's in the public eye and she's heartbroken and then from there she's like okay he doesn't want me I'll date other people. I guess this is just a crush that will be forever unrequited. But in the previous book, Heartless, Sloane gets engaged to this guy named Sterling. Sterling is definitely an asshole. He is a masochist. He is filled with misogyny. We don't love Sterling, but since Sloane and Sterling are engaged, they are at the wedding and Sloane is having some second thought and someone sends her a video of Sterling on his bachelor party and he is having sex with a stripper and that's when Sloane's like this is my permission to no longer be engaged to this man I'm getting out and Jasper rescues her from the wedding whisks her away I think what is implied is that Sloane and Sterling were an arranged marriage by her dad in order to help her dad's business and she was just going along with it because like in her mind I truly feel like she's like you know there's no one that's gonna be better for me than Jasper so you know like this is just what it is what I will say that I don't like about this book it, is that it took Sloane getting engaged and almost marrying someone else for Jasper to realize that he has feelings for her. So what kind of kicks off the romance is Bo, which is one of the Eaton brothers, goes missing. He's in the army and Jasper keeps fucking up his hockey games and his coach is like, you need a break. You need to go on leave. And then Sloane also took a leave from her job. She's a ballerina for the wedding. And so Harvey's daughter, Violet, is like, hey, I need some extra hay on my farm. Can you bring some on the way? So Jasper is like, yeah, I'll volunteer and so I was like, yeah, I'll go with you. So they're on this road trip and throughout this road trip, they admit their feelings towards each other. What I do like about it is that once Sloane and Jasper get together and Jasper admits that he's had feelings for her, he, she's like, what the fuck? She's like confused. She's like, I thought this was gonna be unrequited. Like, why did you like leave me like this for years to so just ponder and wonder what could have been? And then she's definitely like, get away from me, man. I don't think I like you anymore. But then they like come together. I think Sloane is now 28, which would make Jasper 34 so the age gap is less of an ick than they were as kids but I do think the author makes it very clear that Jasper has zero romantic feelings for her as a child it's only when she like comes of age conveniently at 18 does he start getting feelings but that aside I do really like this book I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop just knowing how heartless was just so bad and then I forget what the third act miscommunication was in flawless but I feel like something is gonna go down I feel like something's gonna go down with Sloane and her dad or with Sterling the ex-fiance that's gonna tear them two apart I'm just like why can't we just stay in this happy place why do we have to have a third act miscommunication I'm probably gonna finish this tonight I don't think that this book needs to be almost 450 pages long it seems a little too long I mean I'm, I'm flying through it but I don't think it needs to be this long so far it's sitting at a four stars let's see how that ending comes along but I'll update you later tonight once I am done with this book I finished reading Powerless last night and I think I'm gonna give it four stars there was nothing about this book that I didn't dislike but you know you just had that feeling when you finish a book and you're like oh five stars and this didn't give me that feeling but I still really enjoyed it what I really liked about this is the friends to lovers aspect of it I honestly feel like friends to lovers is probably the best way to set it up this book also doesn't have as much sex scenes as the previous book heartless did which I actually really like because heartless went a little bit too crazy with the sex scenes in that book this one really just like tamped down and kept it normal not gonna lie Jasper is a little bit of a freak so when they did have sex it was very kinky but otherwise it was 
was manageable and bearable. I feel like maybe Elsie Silver got some feedback on the sex scenes that were in Heartless and she decided to just like, you know, tamp it down. I do wish that she would write some more like vanilla sex scenes rather than these like very heavy graphic sex scenes when it is in the book. And like the miscommunication was like, it was fine. It wasn't too horrible. The only thing I wish that Jasper and Sloane would do more is to like talk about their feelings and be like very open with each other. That's the only thing I would say like this book needs more of. I also feel like if you're gonna read this book you have to have read the two books that come previously to it because it did a lot of like relationship building between Jasper and Sloane. So like once you get to this book it didn't like feel like it came out of nowhere but definitely if you didn't read the books in order and you picked this one up it would have felt like it came out of nowhere for you. So I do actually recommend reading it in order if you're gonna pick this one up. But yeah four stars. Elsie Silver has redeemed herself in my eyes. It feels like the chemistry was very rushed and it also feels like a lot of side characters were not developed enough. It's kind of like an outlandish premise of it. It felt like a rom-com but the thing is it's just like not a rom-com that I would prefer. Like I finished this book last night and I haven't thought about it once. This is not something that I'm going to like pick up again. The next book that I decided to read is Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. I read The Bodyguard previously by Catherine Center and I didn't like that book. I just felt like it was too vanilla, if that makes any sense. There were like absolutely no sex scenes in that book. The main characters probably kissed like two or three times and I could not for the life of me figure out why those two characters liked each other. But what is Hello Stranger about? So we are following Sadie, I think that's her name, and she is an artiste, like a struggling artist, but she enters into this company competitions and she is like the top 10 finalist and it's like a really big deal for her because she hasn't had a breakthrough as a portrait painter before so like this is her big break and she doesn't have that great of a relationship with her dad because her dad is a doctor and he didn't like that she chose being an artist as her career path and also her mom passed away from I think either a seizure or a stroke and then Sadie has a medical incident one night where she has a seizure or maybe it was a stroke and she has to be taken to the hospital and when she gets to the hospital they diagnose her with a catarnoma which is basically a cluster of of blood vessels in the brain but she decides to hold off on her surgery but then her dad is like no you actually need to get this ASAP because your mom had one and that's how she died so she goes ahead and gets the surgery and then when she wakes up from the surgery she has face blindness so the way that I'm understanding face blindness is that you can see the face but you can't pull the puzzle pieces of what's on people's faces together and so you could like recognize like the voice and even emotions on those faces but you cannot tell when you look at a face who that person is and I'm about 40% into this book and there are some wild inconsistencies that I'm having with this book. I'm having to suspend my belief a lot in order to like get into the plot. So the issue that I'm finding with this book is because Sadie was diagnosed with a catarnoma, I'm having issue with that plot line. A catarnoma is one part of like four different malformations that you could have in your brain. I don't remember what the four types are. I actually, a little bit of Lexi lore for you, have one of those types. So I have an arterial venous malformation, which is basically a birth defect in your brain where there is a cluster of blood vessels. So the way that my doctor describes it to me is that when I was in the womb being formed by my mother, Bob the Builder in there is like putting you together like, okay, five fingers on this hand, five fingers on this other hand. But in my brain, when he was putting it together, he was like, oops, I just put a little bit too much blood vessels in this one area. And because there's too much blood vessels in your, that area, it makes it really hard for blood and oxygen to flow through that cluster of blood vessels. So it's different from a catarnoma because a catarnoma is more like a raspberry which as an AVM could be kind of a cluster that's kind of like spread through the brain. And so I have an AVM and I've had many many surgeries and different types of treatments on it. And the way that it's described in the book for a catarnoma she basically goes to see a doctor when she has a seizure. She gets an MRI and they're like okay girl you can hold off on it. But then her dad is like because your mom died of this you actually need to go get the surgery ASAP because I'm worried about you so she goes ahead and does it but what's kind of ridiculous to me is that they get the surgery scheduled within days of having that first MRI and when I tell you when I got diagnosed with my ABM I think I got diagnosed in December and then in the following year my first surgery was in February because they had to do so I probably had like 10 different MRIs and I had like what's called like a functional MRIs where they kind of like map the brain and see like if they shut off this part of the buffalo what part of your brain function will you lose so I just find that to be very ridiculous that they were like okay MRI three days later surgery 
And I just, I don't know, I don't like that. And the other thing that I don't like is that they sent her home right after the surgery and she like lives on her own and no one's there to help her. I'm like, you just had like a brain surgery where they like cracked her skull open and no one's there to like help you or put it together. Like I do believe that she could get face line lines because like once you have brain surgery, like your senses are a little bit peaked and you're not able to put like two and two together. At least I wasn't. And that just irks me because it's, it's basically she came out of surgery and she was able to like go about her business and her day. Whereas like when I had brain surgery, I like took a month off work and even when I went back to work I was like a barely functioning person so I don't know I just find the medical diagnosis and the way that they're treating in the book to be highly ridiculous because I know a little bit about the brain and the medical field and that's kind of annoying me the other thing that's wildly inconsistent about this book is because she can't put the people's faces together she's still like meeting people and she's like oh that's Joe I'm like how do you know that that's Joe how do you know that that's Sue your best friend I don't know if the face blindness is like I feel like it's just a gimmick to get you to read the book but it's not done well in the book but anyway the, the main plot point is that she is in this contest and because she's an artist and she has face blindness and she can't you know paint people's portraits that's like the big issue right now is that she wants to like do well in this contest but yet she's sucking at an artist because of her face blindness and then you're probably wondering because this is a romance where is the romance I am unsure I cannot tell you because they're 40 percent of the way into this book and there was like someone in the beginning of the book where she met at like a grocery store that I thought she was gonna have a romance with but then there is this neighbor that lives in her apartment complex that she might be having a romance with but she keeps on calling him like a man hoe and she thinks that he's like sleeping with many different people in the building I feel like and I I will cut this out if I'm correct. I feel I don't know. I, I don't think that I like this book right now. Um, Catherine Center might not be the author for me, unfortunately. So we're just going to have to keep going on. I'm probably going to finish the book today. Like I said, I'm 40% of the way through it. I'm going to continue to listen to audiobook, but the way that's going right now, I do not like this book. So I will check in with you guys once I am finished with this book. Hello, Mimi. How are we doing? How are we doing? Guys, I just have to show you this before... I gave you an update on Hello Stranger, but here's my dog. Here's the window. Ever since we got this bed, she's been loving sitting here and just like sun tanning when the sun is out and staring out the window and barking at random people and barking at the woodland nature animals. As you can see out there, there is a pond and there's a lot of geese and like little ducks and sometimes rabbits that we get out there. Um, and she just loves barking at them. But enough about May, we can focus on me. I had a sinking suspicion that because of her face blindness, two people were going to end up being the same people. And I was correct. All, but also, I forgot to tell you that Sadie has this dog. And her dog had some health problems in the earlier beginnings of the book. And she took it to the vet. And she starts striking up a little romance with her vet but because she has like face blindness like obviously she can't see him she doesn't know what he looks like but it turns out that the vet the apartment guy named joe and the man she met at the grocery store and the man that saved her when she had a seizure are the same person and i just i just I, like i could not not able to put it two and two together but then the other thing is just like with face blindness like the voice it doesn't make you perceive their voice to be different it's just the face so i just like i just don't understand how she could like not put all four of those instances together and make it in her head make sense that it's the one person the other thing that i was finding a little bit ridiculous is her family dynamics so she has this mom or a stepmother that she absolutely hates but like the stepmom is like oh I actually want to have like a relationship with my stepdaughter but then her mom's like totally blind to how her daughter Parker treats Sadie she's like oh Parker can do no wrong Parker is a godsend but Parker is like borderline comical and the way that she treats Sadie and for like no reason Parker just like evil and picks on Sadie and kind of just fucks with her life for no reason it's just that part of it was just like borderline comical to me I'm just like I don't I don't know it just it was no but I also just couldn't get get by the, all the inconsistencies of that were happening in the book of like when she would run into someone and she's like oh that's Sue but I'm like how do you know that that's Sue your best friend but there was other part in the book and I'm just fully spoilers into it now like I didn't already spoil it before when she and Joe kiss for the first time she's like leaning in and she's like oh I can see his lips and I'm kissing his lips uh, and oh I can see his eyes and I'm like how are you seeing his eyes and his lips when you have face blindness like it makes no sense to me i just feel like face blindness was just a gimmick that was used in order to have a third act miscommunication because the third act miscommunication is that she breaks up with the vet because she's like oh i can't really see you because i'm liking somebody else which is joe the apartment guy but she doesn't know that they're the same person so when she breaks up with the vet joe obviously is like why are you still trying to talk to me she's like well i thought we had a thing and he's like no we don't anymore you, you broke up with me she's like huh i broke up with you i don't understand 
fine. I don't know. It was just like the way that Sadie is not the smartest person in the room and she was a pre-med and she also mentioned throughout the book of like, oh, I'm not really good with math. I'm like, how are you pre-med in the past if you don't like math? Like, that literally makes no sense to me. So there were just some wild inconsistencies about this book and I don't know. I feel like I'm going to give it two stars. I think the problem with me reading this book is that because it hit too close to home like obviously if you don't have a brain birth defect or if you don't have a congenital brain problem like you probably wouldn't notice all of the medical misinformation that this book was giving you but because I do I could not to get past it so I think I might give it two stars I don't know I'll sit on it for just a little bit before I like commit and then the next book I read was Happy Place which I gave a whopping one star and I have not been giving a lot of one star book ratings out this year but this book offended me me, it grated on my nerves. I think that Harriet and Wynn are both losers. I simply wanted them to break up. Like, why are you two together? I just cannot relate to characters that don't say what they're mean. I am just a very open, honest, blunt person. And I know my friends tell me I might just be a little bit too blunt for them. But the fact that they just were unable to communicate with each other drove me nuts. And then the friends in this book were so awful. The friends overstepped their bounds. I wanted Wynne and Harriet to break up and when I wanted the friends to just go away all together. But now I am going to start Funny Story. Um, I'm really excited to start this one because it's gotten a lot of good reviews and people who have hated Happy Place actually said that they really like this one. So that gives me high hopes that Emily Henry is going to redeem herself with this one. So we'll see. I'm going to get started and I will probably check up with you guys later tonight. I am halfway through Funny Story and I am loving it. I'm just finding it to be so relatable. To recap the premise of the story, we have Daphne and Peter who are engaged and then we have Miles and Petra who are a couple and at the very beginning of the book we find out that Petra and Peter have been childhood best friends and she confesses her love to him and so Peter breaks up with Daphne and Petra breaks up with Miles and Daphne and Miles are devastated and Peter's like well you have to move out now because Petra's gonna move into our house because we're a couple so with nowhere else to go Miles takes her in as a roommate and each chapter begins with how many days left until Daphne can leave and get out of this town in Michigan because she wants to find a new job she wants to go someplace new and she wants to start all over but one day Miles and Daphne get a wedding invite to Petra and Peter's wedding and Daphne loses a little bit and she she tells Peter that she'll go to the wedding but she'll bring her boyfriend and her boyfriend being Miles. So Miles and Daphne start fake dating because they want to make their respective previous exes jealous. I just find this premise to be so compelling. The other thing that I'm liking is because you know they've broken up with their partners or more so like on Daphne's end. She loses all of the friends that she has you know built with Peter. They pick a side. I mean that's really true. If you guys had watched my previous videos and you know that I would have broken up with a boyfriend that I had for seven years and once we separated the friends that were his friends they no longer want to talk to me and so I just like very alone for a while until I made some of my new friends and had to like put myself out there again. I'm just I'm finding this so relatable and I'm liking this book so much and I just love the way that Emily Henry is writing this and I really like the relationship that is building between Miles and Daphne. You could tell at this point that they really have caught the feels and they're hanging out with each other. Miles is the local or at least he knows the area more than Daphne because Daphne moved to this town in Michigan for Peter and so Miles is like so you've never seen really the town or what this place has to offer and she's like no I've always just kind of been like going to where Peter goes so Miles is taking Daphne to explore new places and Daphne is trying to make new friends I just I just love it so much I just love it Emily Henry you are succeeding you have fixed what went disastrously wrong with happy place but I'm halfway through I think I'm done reading for tonight it's actually 8 p.m right now on a Sunday and House of the Dragons is about to start so I'm gonna go watch that and then maybe I will go to bed and then I'll read more tomorrow but once I finish funny story I will update you guys I have finished funny story also check out my dog she's sitting right by me 
Anyways, I finished Funny Story and I'm giving it five stars. If there were any authors in this video that needed to redeem themselves, it would have to be Miss Emily Henry. Because as I mentioned before, Happy Place is vying for the top spot of the worst book that I've read in 2023, along with Heartless. But this book just gave me so much. I feel like I related to this book more than any other Emily Henry book that she's written. I think it's because our main character, Daphne and Miles, just went through a pretty horrific breakup. And like, I could really relate to that because I myself went through that earlier this year. And the part about like breaking up is the friends that you had as a couple, they choose sides. And when I broke up with my ex-boyfriend, you know, I lost a lot of friends. Also, before anybody says anything, I know that I'm wearing the same EL sweater that I've been wearing in the past couple of clips, but I work from home and therefore I never leave the house. Back to funny story, I think I think what I like most about this book is that Daphne was really on a journey to find herself. Like she's always been a wee. She's always been, you know, that girl that's always had a boyfriend. And this is her first time that she's had to like go it alone. And she realized while doing this is that she doesn't want to be a wee anymore. She wants to be an I. And I just really admire that in her. Also, I think that Emily Henry has written some of the best sex scenes that she probably has ever written. Maybe people we meet on vacation is like slightly better, but I really like the sex scenes that are in Funny Story. She just has this way of keeping it classy while also giving you like a bit of smut and what I really enjoyed about this book is that Daphne and Miles do want to be together but they also want to find a bit of independency after going through those horrific breakups also I would like to say that Peter and Petra they can burn in hell like what the fuck is wrong with those two people I am so glad that I did this video because I found a five-star read and funny story and it's really 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 hard for me to find a five-star read I think what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go to bed. It's about nighttime. May is ready to go to bed and I will give you guys a wrap up in the morning and I will take a shower, look a little bit presentable and wear something different and I will check you guys out in the morning. Good morning everyone. As promised, I'm here to give you a wrap up of this vlog where I gave authors that I hate a second chance romance edition. Also, as promised, I have taken a shower and I have changed my clothes. I did say that I was coming to you looking better, but my hair is undone and that is just the way that it's gonna be. So for my final thoughts, on these books. Let's start in the order that I read them. The first book I read was Powerless by Elsie Silver. I ended up giving this one four stars. I really like the story between Sloan and Jasper and them coming together. But if you're gonna read this one, you really need to read the series in order in order to get all of the past relationship building between Sloan and Jasper. And I do think Elsie Silver kind of like tamped down on the graphic sex scenes. Not gonna lie, there is some graphic sex scenes in this one, but far less than they were in Heartless. And I'm excited to continue on with the series. I know that the next book is focusing on Winter, which is Summer's sister, and Theo, which is a newer bull rider. Both Winter and Theo made an appearance in the first book, Flawless. So that one should be pretty interesting and hopefully we can just kind of like wrap up that storyline. Yeah, four stars for this one. Really liked it. Elsie Silver has redeemed herself in my eyes. And then next book I read was Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. After humming and hawing about this one for a little bit, I actually decided to give this book one star. I think I was just gaslighting myself into liking this book. But when I talked about it and really thought about it, there was like nothing good that I had to say about this book. I thought the writing was not that great. The characters felt underdeveloped. They just didn't feel like real people. They felt like caricatures of real people. I did not like the way that Catherine Center handled the cataroma and then the surgery and then the after of what happens to Sadie. It just felt like she did the minimal research but decided to shoo her in there because she wanted a story about face blindness. And I also thought the face blindness was used so poorly. It just felt like a gimmick in order for Sadie to confuse who she thinks are four different people into like one person. And the other thing that I didn't mention about this book is that there were no intimate scenes. I don't know if Catherine Center just has an aversion to writing intimacy or sex scenes in her book because even in the bodyguard that had no sex scenes and I think in the bodyguard those two main characters kissed maybe like once or twice but then in Hello Stranger they kissed once and then Sadie was like confessing her love to Joe slash Oliver and I'm like you kissed one time you don't know that man like that I just felt like she needed to take the car out on a test drive before she bought it I just think the Catherine Center's book 
could benefit from writing like one or two sex scenes in her books in order to like show why these characters like each other and if they get along intimately. Even in Powerless there were just a handful of sex scenes and I feel like that did enough for me to buy into that relationship. After talking to some of the Patreon besties, I don't think that I'm gonna pick up a Cathy Center book ever again. She's on my do not read. I've heard some things about the rom-comers that weren't great. I just feel like her books are just not for me after not liking The Bodyguard and Hello Stranger. So that is an author that I'm gonna stay away from. And then the last book that I read for this challenge and the author that needed to redeem herself the most was Miss Emily Henry. I think what worked for me in this book is that I could really relate to our main character. This is a book where it was fake dating. Daphne and Miles got dumped by their exes. And I just feel like they had their own journey in this book and I could just really relate to them. This is getting five stars from me. And I'm just begging Emily Henry to never write a book like Happy Place ever again. What the fuck was that book? Honestly, the alternative title for Happy Place should be Everyone Sucks Here because everyone in that book was horrible. But in here, I loved everyone except for Peter and Petra who we were not meant to like. They're the exes that did Daphne and Miles wrong. I'm so glad for the most part that I had a good experience with this challenge. Please let me know what you think about this video, what you think about the books that I read and what my ratings that I gave them. Also don't forget to subscribe, please like, leave a comment below, and I will see you guys in another video next week. Bye!